two of them meeting uh, and again the time there is about 5 45 p.m. we're now inside uh, the Sky City building going towards the escalator to go up the way and we can make out having just got off the escalator the defendant and Ms Mullane and that's the casino floor behind them there's the entrance to Andy's burger bar there and we're about 5 47 p.m. that's the bar itself uh, inside the restaurant and here we can see the two of them walking towards the top of the screen there uh, choosing a table to sit at and we've moved forward to 7 12 p.m. see the two of them leaving and they are at the bottom of the escalator walking out onto Federal Street 7 14 p.m. Uh, and the next location is going to be the Mexican cafe and that's Ms. Mullane and Mr. <laughs> entering the cafe. At 8.27 p.m. or thereabouts, Mr. <laughs> coming up to uh, with a bank card to uh, pay, for, pay for the drinks. Three jugs in total, a couple of jugs of margarita and one of sangria. And that's Ms. Mullane and Mr. <laughs> entering the Bluestone room at 8.30 p.m. And what? Just been shown there is the pair of them kissing. Then we've gone forward about four minutes, 8.45 p.m. And again, the two of them kissing. As we've just seen the timestamp there, about 8.50 p.m. Again, the two of them kissing. Now on to 20 past nine. Ms. Mullane disappears from view. There appears to pick up Ms. Mullane's handbag. That's the two of them leaving the Bluestone Room. City Life Hotel at 9.40 p.m. And getting into the lift there. And they head up to the third floor. I'm telling you, that bag is still in my room. What's in it? Nothing. Nothing's in it. What was in it then? Nothing. Where did it come from? The warehouse. Which warehouse? Uh, atrium. When did you buy it? That day, because I was going to have to move all my stuff out. I, I, I told you. Okay, no, no. That's not the case. Right? You've told, you've told, a, a, you've told a lie. What, what do you it's mean? A big, it's a big mistruth. Um, I went to the warehouse at the atrium. Um, and brought a suitcase. Um, I went back and I was just in shock. Um, because it just didn't seem right. I left to go and get cleaning products. Um, so I messaged a friend and said I'll meet you at Revelry. Um, after, after finishing drinks with, with her, I got back to um, city life. I just kept saying I'm sorry <laughs> and then I went downstairs and I grabbed the the porter thing and I put the suitcase on top of the porter thing I drove the hire car into Wilson's car park and parked it I woke up the next day 
at about 5 a.m. and drove the car out to Kumu at first. I picked up a, a shovel from ITM at Kumu. Um, I ended up driving towards the Waitakeries. I went into the bush. I dug a hole. I went and got the suitcase. And I covered the hole. And then I drove. Where, where is her positions? Um, I threw them in the rubbish. Whereabouts? Um, Albert Park. Rubbish. Right, so what items of her property have been disposed of in Albert Park? Um, everything. All Every, of her clothing? Everything that was in the room. Right. Whereabouts did you clean the car, the outside of the car? Um, I think it was in Henderson. I, I don't know West very well. Okay. And what did you use to clean the car? Um, a water blaster thing from the car cleaning place. Did she have any injuries? Not that I can remember. I was just panicking. Did you inflict any injuries on her that caused her to die? Uh, no. Did you kill Grace Mullane? No. Okay. And you're under arrest for the murder of Grace Mullane on or about the 2nd of December. Okay. You understand? Yep. Did you intend to cause her death? No. Beside the chilling murder of Grace Millane at the hands of her Tinder date. Grace Millane was traveling the world after graduating from college when she met Jesse Kempson on a dating app while visiting New Zealand, then he strangled her to death in his hotel room. In 2018, 21-year-old Grace Millane decided to take a gap year after graduating from college. The young British woman planned to travel the world, and she set off on a backpacking tour that fall. After spending six weeks in South America, she flew to New Zealand for a two-week stay. Grace was looking forward to celebrating her 22nd birthday while she was there, but tragically, she never got the opportunity. On December 2nd, Millane's parents sent her birthday wishes, but she never responded. They grew concerned, and three days later, they reported her missing. Police in Auckland soon discovered that she wasn't just missing. She was dead. In less than a week, they identified her killer as Jesse Kempson, a 26-year-old man with a history of violence against women. Grace had met up with Kempson the night of December 1 for a date after connecting with him on Tinder. And before Grace ever received her parents' birthday message, Kempson had strangled her to death in his hotel room. The Investigation into Grace Millane's Disappearance after graduating from England's University of Lincoln with a bachelor's degree in advertising and marketing, Grace Millane decided to explore the world. The young British backpacker arrived in New Zealand after spending six weeks in South America, eager to begin the next leg of her A adventure. Grace Millane was on a backpacking trip to celebrate her college graduation when she was killed by Jesse Kempson. Her parents told the BBC in 2018 that throughout her trip, Grace had been, bombarding us with numerous photographs and messages of her adventures. That all stopped on December 2, Grace Millane's 22nd birthday. Three days later, on December 5, 2018, Grace's parents reported her missing. While police in Auckland initially believed there was insufficient evidence to say anything had happened to Grace, it only took a few days before they determined that she was, no longer alive. On December 8, police officially announced that Grace Millane's case was being treated as a homicide investigation, and they began to retrace her final steps. Security camera footage helped them follow her movements on the night of her murder. Grace Millane with Jesse Kempson. City Life CCTV footage court evidence. Grace Millane and Jesse Kempson were seen entering the City Life Hotel together on the evening of December 1, 2018. Security cameras from local restaurants and a hotel in Auckland painted a clear, and chilling, picture of her final hours. Millane was seen having drinks with a, male companion, at three different locations throughout the evening, and at nine. 
41 p.m., a camera captured her and the same man in an elevator at a hotel called City Life. Investigators later learned she had met this man on Tinder, and they knew exactly who he was, because he had commented on one of her Facebook photos the very night he killed her. Jesse Kempson, the Tinder date killer. Jesse Shane Kempson was a 26-year-old bartender and laborer. On Facebook, he dropped his surname, going simply by Jesse Shane. When police saw that he had left a comment on Grace's page the night of December 1st, they reached out via social media to request an interview with him. In that first interview, Kempson appeared to be well-mannered, cooperative, and willing to talk. He told police that they'd gone out on a date the night of December 1st but that they had parted ways around 10 p.m., and he hadn't seen her since. The final images of Grace Millane show her in an elevator with Jesse Kempson at 9.41 p.m. on December 1, 2018. However, police had already viewed the CCTV footage, and they knew Kempson and Grace had taken the elevator to the third floor of City Life. Kempson was seen leaving the following morning, but Grace never appeared on the cameras again. Kempson was clearly lying to the police, and he had just gone from a person of interest to the lead suspect in Grace Millane's murder. He was taken into custody on December 8. The following day, Grace's body was discovered in the mountains about 12 miles outside of Auckland. What happened on the night of Grace Millane's murder? As police found Grace's body, viewed her autopsy report, and continued to speak with Jesse Kempson, they began unraveling the mystery of her death. After Kempson and Grace's date on December 1, they had returned to his hotel room at City Life. There, Kempson claimed, Grace asked him for rough sex, and he had accidentally killed her while consensually choking her. However, his actions in the hours and days that followed painted a completely different picture. According to reports, at 1.30 a.m., Kempson searched online for things like hottest fire and flesh-eating birds, visited a porn website, and took seven photos of Grace's dead body, moving her limbs into various poses. The next morning, he messaged another woman on Tinder to schedule a date. When he met up with her that afternoon, he told her a bizarre story about a man who had asked his girlfriend to have rough sex and then accidentally killed her. That same day, Kempson rented a carpet cleaner and bought a suitcase. Less than 24 hours after murdering Grace, he smuggled her body down the elevator and out of the hotel in the newly purchased bag. Jesse Kempson stuffed Grace Millane's body into a suitcase and rolled it out of his hotel 24 hours after the two were seen riding the elevator to his room. Then, on the morning of December 3, Kempson left City Life at 6.15 a.m., stopped at a store to purchase a shovel, and buried Grace Millane in the Waitakere Ranges. Jesse Kempson's trial and rough sex defense. Kempson's argument that an accident during rough sex led to Grace's death didn't carry much weight. He was found guilty of her murder and sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 17 years. In 2020, Dr. Simon Stables testified at the trial that Kempson would have had to apply significant pressure to Grace's neck for at least four to five minutes in order to kill her, which wouldn't happen. Accidentally. What's more, Kempson had committed violent sexual crimes before. Just eight months before murdering Grace Millane, he had sexually assaulted another British tourist he met on Tinder in his motel room after a date. She didn't tell anyone about the assault until she recognized Kempson in media coverage of his trial for Grace's death. Every time I went to sleep, the woman later told Kempson during a separate trial in which he was found guilty of assaulting her, I'd see your eyes popping out of your head. Staring at me in anger. Several other women also came forward with troubling stories about Kempson's behavior. He had told one of them that he liked feet, dominating and strangulation, because it made him feel more superior and in control. And in a third trial, Kempson was convicted yet again, this time for assaulting his former girlfriend while they were living together. He'd threatened her with a knife and forced her to participate in sex acts she was not comfortable with. Though Grace Millane was one of many women Jesse Kempson harmed, she tragically didn't survive to tell her story. The truth of what exactly happened in that hotel room on December 1, 2018, may never come out, but for now, Kempson is unable to add to his long list of victims.